Okay guys, you're gonna see here, look in here real quick. We've got some gasket material because this is a silicone style and we want our base gasket to sit on here nice and flat. So we definitely want to take that razor blade and scrape it backwards or away from what we're doing here. So he's not trying to dig in or anything else, he's just trying to get that clear. And George, get the base gasket ready. Head gaskets and base gaskets, as a general rule of thumb, we realize can be flipped. Now the other thing about this, let's focus in here. Do you see how this one has larger holes drilled for the dial pin in comparison to these here? Yeah. So that's another little clue for us. Now what we also wish is that this dial pin that's stuck in the cylinder here was actually on the, the block itself, but it's not. So when we go to assemble this, we have to really use some caution. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, a couple of things. We haven't really talked a lot about lubrication. We're going to be getting into that uh, uh, possibly this afternoon here. And as you assemble these two strokes, one thing that you definitely want to do is put some oil down these holes right here. What goes there? That's for the main bearings. That's how that main bearings get some oil. Does that make sense? So what we do is use our two-stroke oil to go ahead and pour down there. We've got some in a bottle here we're just going to use. We're going to go ahead, pour some down there, and then also rotate the uh, crankshaft around here to allow that oil to work itself down there. Now you guys already put some grease on the sill and you would have oiled those bearings, but it's nice to go ahead and dump some down those, down those uh, oil holes. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to wipe oil along our piston here uh, as well. We're looking at our piston pins here and we really want to make sure we are standing on two stroke that these rings cannot rotate around here but I'll tell you this you are strong enough you see how I have the pin covered up right now yeah. you are strong enough that if you put a ring compressor around here you would push that steel pin inside of the piston okay and then it won't do its retaining job does that make sense yeah. both sides of the piston have this hook or this notch to go around that pin. So that's what our goal is. Now on this one since we have two of these, now these need lubricated up. You can see here I'll, I'll assemble these. And then with those with those in position like that, the piston is pretty easy to be able to get into the cylinder. Look how easy I did that with no tool. So a two stroke is, is pretty nice. So you don't have to do the whole trick method of putting it in the cylinder first. There's not some huge benefit. We've talked about this in class quite a bit too that the pins are on the intake side. Our, most all our pistons should have an arrow or some type of marking on here that tells towards the exhaust or something else. Look at this Cowie piston. Do you see where it says intake here? Yeah, okay. And that is in relationship to the piston pin itself. So you can see that's uh, installed, it's going to be on the intake side of the motor. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and uh, get this, uh, put some oil around your bearing and your pin, lube that up. We've got our gasket in place and then, uh, George, do you have the cylinder stud nuts out and ready to go? So on your guys' lab sheet, when you guys took them apart, you remember that little warning that we had about there's sometimes an inside nut that can be in the way? We don't have that issue on this cylinder at all, do we? Because all of our nuts are exposed. So we don't have to worry about installing something first or doing anything else. You got those up. Okay, smear uh, some oil around the cylinder itself. You don't have as much worry on a two stroke because there's not a lot of room but we do need to get our wrist pin clip put in on our other side and then we need some oil around the rod itself. Smear it around there. Perfect. Okay. Put our bearing in, slip our piston in. Some of these do require that pin installation removal tool to get the pin uh, to pin on, to get the pin to press in. You have to suck and draw it through. What you do is you draw, flip the tool around, and draw it through the other way. All right, safety glasses on, everybody. Get your thumb working this way. 
Okay, you can let go of this one because that's where you're going to kind of walk it over. And I think you might be a little excessive on how much overhang. Try to have less overhang. What I mean by overhang is the amount of wrist pin clip past the relief. So if he just rotates that around until the clip is just barely covering it, don't try to push that top one in. Just side load it from the bottom. Okay, now walk it around. Yeah, there we go. He's getting really close now. That's a lot better. Why don't we just why don't we go ahead and just try that? Let's get this in there. Okay. Use your pick to finish pushing it in. It's not in. Okay, did you hear it? If you try to just compress and snap that in, it's for sure going to be a problem. So what I'm looking is I'm making sure that the, the gap is not cr open across the relief here. And uh, see if we can get the, you see it right there? And so when this is in the up position here, that is in the six o'clock position, that's a good uh, wrist pin clip installation, okay? And we never reuse these, we always install new ones in these applications, right? Yep. All right, cool. So take your rag out. We've got everything up. Now you pull the rag, you gotta be careful with the gasket. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So now here's the tricky part, is that you've gotta be able to lower this, okay? Lower the cylinder and uh, compress the rings at the same time. So the rings need to be in their proper position. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to practice your ring compression. Does that make sense? You're gonna practice how you uh, compress that. And if you look, flip the cylinder upside down real quick. Do you see how we have room to go in the middle here? Yeah. So George needs to think about if he's gonna be the guy compressing, okay? You aren't gonna be able to hold it like that. Let me show you here. You're gonna have to come from underneath like this way if, if you're gonna do this, All right. okay? Now you can do this on your you know, on your own. But our, our big thing is, is we, we shouldn't have to have any force. You know? Watch your gasket too. Right, See how the gasket's getting a little shaky? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we're in place. Mm -hmm. Okay, were you struggling a little bit? Yeah. What do you think was the issue? basically two people. Yeah, I think so too. What I'm going to do is I'm going to load the back of the piston ring and try and get it close here. And if I'm not loaded on the back side, what will happen is it's not going to allow me to be seated in the in the ring. You guys see that? So you see how this one here? And as I push it, final push it with my hands here, it's still off a little bit, but now I'm good and set there. I'm good and set there. So I'm gonna go ahead and swing this around again. I'm just gonna take the cylinder. You see how it's almost really easier with one person? Yeah. Here's the thing too, as you, as you focus in here, is I don't have to be so perfect, but what I notice for me, if, if, I, if I load it opposite the pin, okay, if I load it opposite the pin and basically do a little test fit and then just support it with my fingers, it's going to, it's gonna go ahead and just work fine. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then watch here, do you see how the ring's sticking out here? Watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to side load it with the cylinder. Does that make sense? Yeah. I use the cylinder to compress the ring for me. 